hi everyone and welcome to the Learning Lads. Today I want to do a video on storytelling and um, teaching writing in your home school. Um, it's something I'm extremely passionate about. I do write myself. It's something I've, I love to do and it pains me when I see children who um, are not fans of writing or that, you know don't like it and often I find half the problem is is that it's associated with this writing. <laughs> So you can tell a story and you can um, create this am amazing experience for another person without actually ever having to pick up a pencil and you know you can just do that either with actions or using your mouth and telling a story and I think once you separate those two things you get a much more willing and um, participant in the whole process. So when we first started out with storytelling and everything else um, I presented it to her not in the form of here's your journal um, write something um, because that can be extremely daunting for a child especially one who is a reluctant writer or um, isn't a huge fan of writing to sit and then to put add the pressure onto them <gasps> now they have to create a story as well so they're not only having to laboriously write every single letter that they hate doing they have to create a story I mean you know it can be really overwhelming for kids so the, what I would suggest um, is to start off really slowly and you'll be amazed at the difference you'll get in participation willingness. <laughs> so when we first started out I would use things like little puppets. Um, I would use things like flashcards with pictures on and I would make no pressure I would just um, set out these different things on the floor and we would just start playing with them. And you'll often find when kids are playing that they naturally talk and they'll start telling you things about what the animal is doing or, um, you know, what's on the card. And you can, you know, ch chip in, you know, into the conversation. Oh, wow. So what's your, what, what's your bear doing? Is it running? Um, you know, it, what's it doing? Is it climbing? And doing that continually. So every day you'll notice over time that they'll start getting the toys out themselves and they'll start telling the story themselves without you having to actually say anything and often they can create well not often I'd say pretty much 99% of the time they will create a story tons better than you could ever dream of when you're trying to push it and saying you know are they running well I think where are they going are they going to the park and if you let them tell you it'll be far better because kids have an amazing imagination um, it is one of the things that I love about kids is that they can create so many amazing things and you're just standing there thinking, whoa, I think all kids should write their own books because those, those would be the best books that anyone would want to buy. Um, what do we adults know? <laughs> but anyway, so that's how we'd start off. So things like puppets and cards. Another great one to do is sensory boxes. So if you're doing sensory boxes seasonally um, or, you know, just for fun, um, use that as a story a starter so you could put things in there that would generate conversation um so we used to do nature ones so we put leaves in and um acorns and you know think about this time of year and you know little bits and things treasures that we found on our walks and you could do a non-fiction story so you could start talking about how they grow and everything else or you could do a, a, an imaginative fantasy story so you could say okay so what, what did we do when we went to, to get those things and what would happen if um, the squirrel was trying to take the nut? Would we still, you know, and that's how you can to encourage them with creative thinking. And none of that involved actually writing anything down at all. Obviously, you can't do that forever. There is going to come a point where they need to start writing. But encouraging that love and passion for storytelling is so important that once you actually get to the stage where you need to start thinking about writing it down, you are going to find that they're much more positive about it one because they've got tons of ideas two because they've seen your reaction how much joy you have and um in listening to them telling you their story that's motivating by itself and three you can break it down you can say well we don't have to write it all at one time we can um you know do a sentence at a time or whatever and there's no rush um you could also obviously uh write down for them so they can narrate to you and then you can write down that's a very popular method and it's something that is really encouraged especially with the, with the brave writer curriculum and things like that is for you to actually be the narrator sorry for them to be the narrator and you to uh, write it down um, for them and I think that's a great way especially with the younger ages and even with reluctant writers to encourage them because once you've they've actually got it on paper and then can read it again themselves I, so you put it into a nice little book for them 
my daughter loves making these little books which I staple for her um, and you know she creates them she absolutely enjoys it so much and they can look back on it and they can see wow I did that and that sense of achievement can also encourage you especially if you've got a reluctant writer because they can see the efforts of what they did and it becomes a more positive experience rather than a negative one um, you know which often can happen especially if you've got a reluctant writer so those are a few things I do initially so no pens at all unless you want to hold the pen um, start with toys uh, activities from nature walks so you know items that you've got collected from a nature walk um uh, leaflets so say you go to i don't know the fair or you go to a museum and you pick up one of those little brochures um that's great to look at the pictures in it um when you're at home so you've got your museum brochure and it's got all the different um displays you saw in it and everything else and that can spark stories as well so you don't have to have um, a curriculum initially and you definitely don't have to have well, at all and you definitely don't have to have um, a pen it can just be all verbal and let them edge up to that way and edge up to that level and you'll find that they are much more willing um, eager and will enjoy it so much more than if you just say right here's your notebook today you're gonna write two pages um, on a story or two pages on what we did at the weekend terrifying to most kids <laughs> especially the younger ones so that's what I do, start off small. And then when you talk about character development and story development and everything else, that comes later. You've got to spark that interest initially because um, you'll often find that children will say, but I don't know what to write or I've got no ideas. Um, but then if you take them out of that pressure zone and just start playing with them, you'll find that they suddenly they're, you know, this amazing fantasy game that they've just created where the Pokemon are eating this and um, battling against this other Pokemon. And that's all storytelling. Um, even if it is characters that are what they've seen on screen, it doesn't matter. It's still storytelling. It's still building up the foundation of, okay, a story's got a beginning, it's got a middle. Okay, what's going to happen at the end? That's all story development and it doesn't have to be, um, you know, the, it doesn't have to be Charles Dickens. It doesn't have to be... Um, Charlotte Bronte you know it doesn't have to be some amazing story it can just be their imagination and it's how you react to it that is most important um, and you know you, d it, you don't expect too much that's what I'm trying to say um, but praise them for whatever they produce even if it's the most cat went to the park cat ate a leaf cat choked cat recovered cat went to the vet recovered even if it, you know it's the most oh my goodness you know don't be piling the pressure well you need to add this you need to add that just be grateful for what they produce and be excited about what they produce because as you know yourself as an adult the more someone is um reacting to you in a positive way no matter what you do it does encourage you to want to try harder and also to replicate it and do it again because you've got that positive feedback and that's why I said in, in my essentials for homeschool video that your attitude is so important especially with writing um who wants to bring a paper to the to the teacher or you know the homeschool mom or whoever it is just the parent and and for them to say well that didn't make sense or wow um you could have done a bit more work on that um it's not going to be encouraging at all <laughs> so enthusiasm is really important okay so as i said then we want to start building in the foundations of okay well now you know how to make an imaginary story or a fiction uh, a non-fiction story but we want it to have the beginning the middle the end transition words all that kind of thing how do we do that um so one of the things that i think is a really good idea is to um do an activity it can be anything it can be you making something so a recipe it could be are you building something so getting our non-fiction in there or it could just be you getting the farm out and putting all the animals in and you know a, a creative game like that and to take pictures of each stage of what you do so we've got the beginning okay what did we do we took a picture of what we did okay we set our animals out okay let's take a picture of that okay and then they'll be thinking what on earth are you doing or they might be thinking wow this is so fun with the camera taking a picture of each stage and then you'll get to the end you'll print off the pictures or you'll just look at them on your computer and you'll say okay let's look at this picture what did we do so we've got, okay, well, we opened the box. We got our, our um, farm out, blah, blah, blah. And then the next picture, okay, what did we do in this one? We progress from there to there. Oh, and then what did we do in this picture? Okay, and before you know it, you've got a beginning, a middle, and an end of a story. And by doing that repeatedly with different activities, they can start to understand that every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And generally, if you read to your kids a lot, they know that anyway. Um, but sometimes there can be, you might find that there's... Um, 
there's a blank look on their face because from getting to that level of well they can they know what happens in a story and to actually how to do it in their own story um so that really helps with the whole taking pictures of things it just helps them see different um steps of a story okay another thing that um i think is a really good as well is you modeling so tell them stories throughout the day and i don't mean pick up a book i mean create an imaginary story my daughter absolutely loves doing this it's one of her favorite things to do she'll constantly ask me to make up a story but she'll also interrupt and change the story which is amazing but that is something that i think that develops in t over time of practice and she'll also um, make her own imaginary story and they are just the best way to practice and they'll pick up on you modeling as well so they'll pick up on you know the beginning the middle the end the transitions in between and it's just so fun and they'll start to really love stories because of the fact that you're telling them this imaginary story you're spending time with them um, they're creating too because often as I said you'll find with most kids that they'll come up with a better idea so they say oh but actually what if that character did this instead this is my daughter all the time oh no 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 let's pause at that chapter let's do this in this chapter instead <laughs> and she can take it on a, on a whole different level and it's so fun um, it's one of those I guess it's like um, the whole you write a line I write a line thing but um, with obviously not introducing the pen at this stage um, which is always another good way uh, but we can come to that later okay so another thing to do is to act out stories too so this can be from uh, stories in books that they've read or it could just be their own story and they act it out and again it helps with the learning the transitions of different parts of a story um, because they'll actually see it themselves when they're you know okay well that didn't work um, okay let's change it let's do this instead um, and another thing as well is uh, to um, if you are going to do that is maybe record them and then they can watch it back themselves my daughter loves me taking videos of her uh, when she's telling stories and doing her acting out scenes and everything and then she loves watching them back um, and again they can pick up ideas and inspiration um, from from what they're doing in terms of play and one of the most important things to me in homeschool and in education generally I think is learning through play and all of these ideas that I'm giving to you a lot of them are play um, they're not sitting at a desk with a piece of paper um, writing you know and what they've done that day or whatever but they're all still learning opportunities and they're all still building foundations of um, the next step and also um, it's generating that enthusiasm and love of writing <laughs> um, by you know, it's storytelling but you know not involving any pencils <laughs> okay so I'm just looking at what else I wrote so when you once once you actually are at the stage where you do because inevitably they have to write it down at some point but often you'll find with all those added elements to it that I've just mentioned that there are more they will be more willing to do so but you'll always have your reluctant writer um, in that scenario and that's absolutely fine as adults we don't love everything I do not like uh, taking clothes out of the washing machine and folding them and putting them away I have to do it but I don't like doing it so there's always going to be things in life that you don't like and you know you'll some children just might not like writing and they might never like writing um, but you can obviously make it as comfortable as possible for them and that is really important in terms of not adding pressure on and knowing their limits when they say they're done they can't write anymore that's fine don't push because that's not going to help at all <laughs> for one and you're not going to generate that spark between storytelling and actually the physical aspect of writing take take over for them um, let, write them write for them yourself if they are getting to that stage okay so they are inevitably gonna have to write it down eventually having a fun way to write it down so um, lift the flap making books um, doing a, a holiday journal so a fun experience and sticking uh, little pictures in of things that they've done over the holidays or places they've been so scrapbooking kind of thing it's all still writing and they're still getting those um, essential skills but they're just telling the story in a different way rather than just lines on a page um, making their own little books that they can as, as I said before you can bind for them um, or staple and they can look back on after is much more encouraging than that just that blank piece of paper where there's loads of lines but you do obviously want them to be able to do that because they're going to have to reach a point where they are inevitably have to, going to have to do that. So one of the things you can do is story plan. Now, as a writer, um, there are two camps with story planning <laughs> and um, and um, you've got your your planner um, who labels everything, details absolutely everything at a part of their story. And then you've got your uh, what they call pants are the people that don't just fly by the seat of their pants and don't plan anything out at all. And you're going to have to judge where your kids are 
in between those two things because if they don't like planning and they just want it right away then you know I don't see any harm in doing that but the editing and the revising comes afterwards but let them go at it if they're ready they've got ideas you know don't be like oh well, you have to do this at the beginning you've got to include this at the end that all comes in the editing process as far as I'm concerned but you might find that your kids are very methodical and they like they need steps and especially when they're learning they still might need steps but in do those steps in a fun way. So one of the things that I um, did in my literature pack was um, do a character house where you're building, uh, a story house where you're building um, the story. So the roof would have the characters under, so it was lift the flaps, so you'd lift the roof up, you'd write all your names of your characters in. In each window, you'd have like a plot, um, a problem, a resolution, and then in the front door, you'd have your book cover where you could design your book cover. So that's a fun way of planning, um, but they're also, you, you you are helping them with their story development but it's entertaining it's interesting they've got something to look back on and they can use it multiple times with multiple stories and also I think drawing your book cover is really important because it can help you um, as a writer I know if I've, I often do my book cover first before I even start writing because it helps me see all my inspiration and where the story is going so writing um, uh, creating your cover um, can often really inspire you and also it can help you with your story development because you'll see clearly once you've drawn everything out how you want your story to progress so that's why I included the um, drawing the cover on, on, on the actual story building house um, in case you're wondering why but I think um, all those things will definitely help but if you as we all do want the curriculum and um, we want something to guide us and I've got a selection of things here that I'll show you that I have used and really like um, that don't kill the love of writing and telling stories um, because it, it, as I said it breaks my heart when I see kids say I don't like writing I hate it because they are so imaginative and so creative and often if you take away the pencil aspect to it you'll find a complete one a uh, complete 360 there'll be um, or maybe 180 because they'll maybe they'll half like it um but often you'll find it's completely reversed they're all oh, much more eager and excited and as i said don't let the evil pencil stop your kids from loving to tell stories because as i said as someone who loves to write it's heartbreaking when i see that happen but you can turn it around don't don't be uh, despondent or disheartened you can definitely turn it around and often it's just a, a ch it's easy it, often it's just a case of just changing that one element to it okay what is it they don't like is it the I generation of ideas well there you've got your story house uh, you know creating your characters your plot and everything else is it the actual writing well okay we can share you write I'll write or I'll write the whole thing for you um and then you can copy it out or you know however way you want to do it oh let's make it into a book instead of a piece of paper with lines on that will often encourage them um so the couple of books that i put aside that i love so we have got the giant right every day this is from evermore and it's grades two to six so the 300 topics in here with 202 story starters and titles so if one of the things my daughter absolutely loves is comics and I think they are such a great way to encourage if you do have a reluctant writer um, or you do, or you have an artist who tell, likes to st tell story through pictures and don't forget that that is just as important telling stories through pictures as is writing with a pen and that's something else that I would do at the beginning as well is encourage just drawing, um, telling stories through drawing because that is equally as important um, a skill you're still getting your hand um, strength in, you know, your fine motor skills and everything else while you're drawing. Um, and that, again, that can spark the excitement and interest in writing. So yeah, comics are absolutely fabulous. This is the Osborne Write and Draw Your Own Comics book. They also have a pad that goes with that. Then we've got the Osborne Write Your Own Storybook. Again, this is full of so many different ideas and um, ways to um, encourage and explore writing in different styles because you might find that your kid hates fantasy but absolutely loves non-fiction or they absolutely hate non-fiction and love fantasy writing or they prefer magazines or um you know magazine writing or newspaper articles um so it's just finding what they like but encouraging all other areas as well to explore that interest and then another thing is, as well is a great idea is to have an idea journal so you're taking away the, you're taking away that old piece of paper with tons of lines on and making it more fun where they're just writing tidbits and little um i love making lists so you know little lists of things that they ideas that they have or draw pictures 
as I said, pictures are so important and you're, they are equally as good as writing um, initially, for, for sure. I'm building up those skills, so I'm just getting attacked by my cat who is determined that I cannot make a video and really should play with her instead. She's very judgmental when I, I make videos. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, um, so yes, so having a little journal, um, it doesn't, it, this is the Osborne story writing journal. This looks so fun. We're all using this in third grade. I'll let you know how we like it. But anything would work for a journal. Um, it's just something that we have and I'm excited to use um, this year. Those are some helpful ideas. Um, I can talk all day about writing um, and I do think that at some point I want to make a series about writing and maybe break it down rather than giving you all this information break it down into step by step so not necessarily curriculum but like a lesson plan of ideas of what you can do because I'm so so passionate about writing I absolutely love it um, and storytelling and everything else and um, I just really want kids to um, as much as possible explore that side of their imagination and creativity uh, but enjoying it and it not be such a drag and um, something that they 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 dread there are games that you can use and we do love the roller story games we have the um what are they called rory story cubes they're great again for if you're you can't think of things or maybe to take you out of your box of things that you would think of normally um sensory boxes as i mentioned are fabulous they are also sensory boxes i find are also a great way to expand vocabulary in story so not just necessarily understanding the vocabulary but using it in your story too because you can talk about how something feels um you know what is it cold is it hot you know building on the the uh, language skills that they will use uh in their story sensory boxes are fabulous for that um and I hope those tips are helpful. If you've got any questions, leave them below. As I said, I do think that I might expand on this and um, come up with some lesson plans. I do have my um, literature printables on my teacher's, pay teacher's site. I'm gonna, um, that is not the only things I, I have though in mind for that. I do wanna make more um, because as I said, this is this is a strong passion of mine. So I will be adding um, some more products on teachers, pay teachers over the next few months um more uh, story ideas and um games and things that you can play but i have never found well so far anyway a game that a board game or anything that you can purchase that is as good as you and your kids sitting down together making some imaginary stories up that is just the best <laughs> as far as i'm concerned um if you find a game that's better than that definitely let me know um <laughs> i'd be really interested to know that but um I just think you don't have to complicate it. You don't need tons of accessories and everything else. Um, it's just all about setting them up for success uh, as opposed to tearing them down or um, scaring them with the evil pencil and the evil paper uh, initially uh, until they feel confident in their abilities and um, take that pressure off. And you'll find, as I said, once they find their genre that they love, they'll be off. But it's always nice for them to have a mix as well. And um, even if they always love nonfiction or if they always love fiction, to try different things because you never know until you try something whether you like it or not, like with food. <laughs> so thank you so much and I'll see you in our next video. Bye for now.